Okay, so we've done a lot of clutch videos and I wanna explain one key part of clutch failure or clutch underperformance that I think a lot of people might struggle with but not necessarily know how to uh, address. Have you ever had a bike where it won't start in gear or it's really hard to start in gear or you start it in neutral and you kick it into first and it immediately kills the engine? That might be okay. There's a lot of clutches that have a little bit of drag like that that's not really a problem. But on this bike, it's done that for a long time but that's gotten way worse and it's now also dragging when I try to shift riding. That same problem can also be caused by a couple other things. Clutch lever adjustment. So in this case, I've got the clever lever on the bike and that requires pretty fine tuned adjustment. It can also come from clutch plates that are wearing or something wrong with the clutch stack. Bad springs, too little oil, too much oil. There's a, there's a few different things. So I'm not sure which of those is wrong with this bike in particular, but I am gonna pull the cover and we're gonna take a look at it. But first I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm talking about so you can understand what happens. So we're gonna fire up this bike. It's cold, it's not a cold day, but the bike is cold. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop it in gear. You're gonna see it's immediately gonna stall. When I try to start it in gear, it's gonna drag and struggle. When I pull the clutch in, that's not gonna help a ton. Even after I get the bike up and running around, when I come back to a stop, the bike's just pushing forward even with the clutch pulled all the way in because the clutch plates have too much drag because the, the oil's cold and something is wrong with them. So let's fire it up. <laughs> See, lots of drag on the clutch, even with the lever pulled in all the way. Now, I'm gonna pull the clutch lever in all the way and I'm gonna show you what happens when I start it. And I'm gonna hold the rear brake in this case so I don't shoot off down the, the path here. See, the starter motor won't even try to pull against it because it's so much drag that the starter is, is cutting. So I'm gonna pop it back in neutral. Clutch pulled in all the way and the bike's just goo, 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 goo. clutch is really dragging. Now, before you dig into the clutch stack itself, definitely make sure your levers are set okay and you don't have a problem with like the oil level or something like that. In this case, those things are okay. So we're gonna pull this bike into the shop. I'm gonna pull the recluse stack out and we're gonna see what's going on and see if we can diagnose it. I'm draining the oil because I wanted to change the oil anyway. There is some stuff on here other than the valve shim. It's not all that bad, but there's some what look like clutch fibers and things. So that's one thing you'll want to start to check to see if stuff's coming apart in the engine. All right, we've got the oil drained out. We're going to pull the clutch cover. I don't immediately see anything wrong. So let's pull the Bellevue spring. collar, and the Bellevue spring, pressure plate. Ooh. You don't want to drop these pins in the engine. The bushings in these things actually make quite a bit of difference and there should not be play like this. If you look in past these pins, you can actually see where they hit the bushings and there's just a ton of play. So this stack's got to come out and we're going to walk through the clutch stack and see what's in it. A lot of wear in the steel plates. These clutch plates are just stuck together. That's why there's so much drag on the clutch. See how there's like this, this black part and then silver, which is obviously the friction surface and then another black edge. If I run my finger across those, some of these are real smooth. I can't feel where that color changes, but if I go down in the middle of the stack and I rub my finger across these, I can definitely feel where the color changes here, which tells me that the these things, these brake pad like things have actually cut into the steel plate, cut a pattern, which makes sense. And I think part of the drag is coming from the fact that they're actually set into the steel plate just a little tiny bit when the clutch stack is compressed. And I think that means these steel plates are shot, like worn out. And I think I'm gonna stick with the Reckley's basket and hub and everything because I like those. With new bushings in it, I'm gonna try the stock plates and I'm gonna see how they drag compared to the Recluse. This uh, push rod has a directionality to it. I don't know if all bikes do, but this one does. The end with the divot goes in, the rounded end comes out here. You can't use a traditional clutch basket wrench on these because they don't have the teeth that you would set against. So you gotta use one of these. You gotta do it really carefully. new 
one of these probably because this end, these ends are pretty banged up. Inner surface is fine. Then we can drop this apart. Oh my god. These little rubber things are supposed to be connected in one piece like this one. And you can see that they are just shot. They're hard. They're mostly broken. So that's gonna have been slamming back and forth, which is not great. I want to see how these sidewalls are. A lot of times you can get wear in these castle sidewalls of the basket and that can prevent the plate sliding in and out properly and that can make the plate stick and either refuse to engage or refuse to disengage as they get really bad. These are fine, like just need new rubbers and uh, some new plates. These recluse plates are worn, which makes sense. I've had it in here for a little while and I'm really pretty aggressive with my clutches. Be right back. I'm gonna put the dampers on, rebuild the whole clutch stack with the original OEM clutch plates, but all the recluse basket hub, etc. pressure plate parts. So let's dive in. We can toss the old lock ring. These are the new bushings. There's a little bit of flex to them, but mostly they're still connected. So we're gonna use those new ones. The recluse plates are worn, I think. And back to the OEM. Rubber dampers drop in like this with the connector thing into the hub, facing inward that is. They sit in there like that. And then our hub, or sorry, inner hub. So on a lot of bikes, these dampers, especially older bikes, these dampers are in the basket. But on here, they make them really easily replaceable. It's kind of a nice system. And I'm having to press it in because the new rubbers are tight. They're like fitted as they're supposed to be. So as you saw a minute ago when this was in, the center is turning now, but there was a lot of play. You could turn in those slots quite a lot. Now there's no play at all this inner hub, I could barely press it into place there. It is solid, so that's what you want. I think there should be a metal plate on both sides like there was, because I think that is gonna protect the wear on the hub and um, pressure plate. So you've gotta put these little guys back in without dropping anything in the engine. Just gets a little tricky. We're gonna start with a steel disc. There are two places that you can put the fiber discs, but one has got like a U-shaped bottom to it and the plates won't be able to go all the way in. If you get any of the fiber discs in that one, as you're building the whole stack, the whole thing's not gonna work. So you gotta make sure they're all in the right channel. Push rod for the clutch. This is the recluse pressure plate. This is made taller. So change of plans. We're actually gonna pull the recluse stuff and go entirely back to stock. Same dampers. Don't forget the washer. Goes behind inner part of the hub. The clutch hub nut is tightened to 50 foot pounds. And then we gotta bend these tabs back. The trick I found for bending these is to grab them with pliers so you're not knocking or pressing on any of this stuff unnecessarily. Okay, basket, separating washer, main part of the inner hub, inner part of the inner hub with rubber dampers, washer, locking washer, nut, push rod for the clutch, then rollers, then clutch plates. There are two steel plates with an S marked in them. That's the top and the bottom of the stack. Pressure plate, Bellevue spring. This is to protect the surface where the Bellevue washer flexes. Yeah, it's, it's like that. And then we've got this adjustable washer. One, two, and three. I think I was on two. So we're gonna try that again. It's in the center like that. And we've got a thousand little screws. These have a torque, it's not very high. Don't over torque them. And then there's this big O-ring, goes here. Yeah, stock clutch cover. These also have a really low torque. Don't over torque them either. That's everything. Just gotta fill some oil in it. Okay, so stock clutch is back in. It turns out you can't combine recluse basket hub parts with 
the stock plates, the stack height doesn't add up. The Recluse stuff is taller because they add plates, which I didn't realize. We are 100% back to stock, including the clutch cover. And I've eliminated the clutch drag. I'll fire it up. I'm gonna pop it in here. No pull at all. No yank. I got like can easily roll the bike backwards while the motor's running and it's in first gear, which is a thing we couldn't do before. So I'm pretty stoked about that. I'm disappointed with the reckless clutch that I put in this bike because it's always had a lot of drag and I don't know, it seemed like it had good like hill climb performance in the beginning, but it's had drag for a long time and it's gotten progressively worse and worse. I probably could have just dropped new recluse plates in and fixed it, but they're expensive. So here we are back to stock. Um, for this particular bike, I didn't put the recluse clutch in for any other reason really than to do a review of it. I'm not that impressed. I like recluse products, but it didn't change anything for this bike and like any clutch the plates wore and I had issues with it and so we're back to sock and I'm perfectly happy with that and I think we're gonna stick that way and now the question is what do I do with this bike so hill climb bike or supermoto vote in the comments and buy a chin mount we make 3d printed custom chin mounts for lots of dirt bike helmets and we're including a few street helmets and link in the description you should check them out they're pretty cool thanks for watching like subscribe all that cool stuff we're on Instagram see you next time